Hey guys, okay, so we are going to talk about the independent and the dependent variable in this video. Um, and I've got the stopwatch going, so hopefully I'm going to try to do my best to keep it under the 12 minutes. Remember, I am going to load this in Edpuzzle, so you'll have some questions to ask. So please be listening and writing notes. All right, independent and dependent variable. Remember, independent is my X and dependent is my Y. And you're going to have to graph these eventually. So remember, independent is always going to go on my X axis and dependent is always going to go on my Y axis. Because Y variables are dependent, we say Y is dependent on X or we're going to say Y is a function of X. Remember? f of x from last week. That's what we were working on. Um, so looking at a problem, one that you're very familiar with, one thing I want you to make sure you always do is identify your variables. And what does it mean to be a variable? I don't have a number. When I put numbers in these problems, I don't ever want you to tell me that the variable is a number because that's the absolute opposite. When I am looking for variables, I'm looking for two things that are going to be changing, right? My number that it could be will be changing. So in this one, I have the statement, the hours I study and my test score. Well, the two things that are going to change are going to be the hours and my test score. Hours and test score. Now, the easy way to determine who is independent and dependent is look at what happens first. Now, I'm not talking about in the sentence. I'm talking about in the situation. I don't care how they write the sentence. They could rewrite this with those, that word test score first, right? So in the situation, what happens? I study, then I get the test score. So hours is what's going to happen first. That means that hours is my independent variable. And test score is dependent. So my test score is dependent on the hours that I study and the statements you're going to be writing me are going to look like um, test scores are a function of the hours I study. Okay. And just a little um, trick, a little shortcut, guys, time, any kind of time, minutes, seconds, hours, days, weeks, any kind of time is always a variable and it is always independent. So anytime you see time in a sentence, you're going to know that that's going to be your um, independent variable. Okay. All right. Let's look at another situation here. What if I have the money I make and the hours that I work? Well, just told you hours and money, right? Now the money in the sentence comes first, but in the situation, do I do the work first or do I make the money first? And it's the work first. So hours and money are the two things that are going to change. What would happen first? Hours. That means hours is independent and money is dependent. And my function statement is going to be something like The money I earn 
is a function of the hours I work. Okay? All right. Let's try one more, and then I'm going to start letting you do some in the Ed Puzzle. The amount of rain and how tall the grass is. What two things would be changing? The amount of rain and the, how tall the grass is. And you can use your own words. You could say something like the height of the grass or something like that. It, it's, you don't have to use my exact words. All right, so I'm going to say height of grass and rain. What's going to happen first? The rain. The rain comes and the grass grows. So rain, the amount of rain, that's my independent and my dependent is how tall the grass is. Height of the grass is a function of the amount of rain. Okay. How am I doing on time? I think I got about six minutes in here, so that's not too bad. Uh, all right. couple more. Work this. I'm going to ask you some questions. Let it pause. All right. The number of flowers I pick and the cost of the bouquet. Well, two things that are going to be changing. How many flowers I want in that bouquet and the cost of that bouquet. So I'm going to say number of flowers and cost. What would happen first? Well, I got to go pick the flowers. I'm not going to pay first and then go get. So I'm going to say number of flowers happens first. That makes the number of flowers my independent. And my dependent is going to be cost. The cost of the bouquet is a function of the number of flowers. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try another one. Now we're going to be practicing this in class. This is what we're going to be doing this week. Um, along with writing the equations, the y equals mx plus b equations that go along with this stuff. The number of people in the room and the volume in the room. Number of people, volume. Two things that are changing, number of people and the volume. What happens first? Number of people. People come in the room, right? And as people come in or people leave, the volume's going to change. So the number of people uh, is going to be my independent, and the volume is going to be my dependent. So the volume is a function. of the number of people. All right, one more. My phone keeps going to sleep. I keep checking on my time with y'all. All right, we're going to do one more, and then we'll close this, this one up. The position of the sun and the time of day. Time of day, position of the sun.
now time of day so that kind of I'm not using this time as a measurement but as a point so that kind of flies in the face of what I told you earlier of time being but this isn't like a measurement of time is it it's just like a point so I'm going to tell you that the position of the sun comes first because the, the sun comes first right so position is my independent and the time of day because that is how we created time right by the sun and the sundials is dependent so time of day is a function of the position of the sun okay all right hopefully you did well on your ed puzzle please remember to submit